Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. This video is captioned, How Selfish Can Women Be? <laughs> Gentlemen, we're about to hear a story here about a woman who divorced her husband. And caption goes on to read, Let me tell you what I just saw. No more wasting time. Let's get it. So in court today, this woman has divorced her husband because he gets cancer. He got sick and she divorced him. She said that having to take care of somebody that had cancer just took away from her quality of life so much that she couldn't handle it. She said that it wow. wounded her to be inside that marriage after this guy gets cancer. Well, she's back in court suing him for money because it come to find out his life insurance has an advanced payment. Like he's for sure dying. And life insurance paid out in advance of $300,000 so that he could pay medical bills. Jeez, pure evil. She's in court while this man is in the hospital on his deathbed, suing him for an advance payment of his life insurance that she forfeited during divorce. Like how selfish can women be? This guy literally can't even come to court because he's laying in bed dying and she's sitting in there trying to sue him for life insurance money that he used to pay the medical bills so that his kids wouldn't have to pay his medical bills. Ooh, let me tell you, never ceases to amaze me. The depth and pettiness that women will go to to get a man's money from him, even after they're dead. Wow. Um, what a tragic story. So here we have a husband who's thinking of his children it sounds like because someone's gonna have to pay those medical bills and it sounds like he has a good relationship with his kids and they would pay them but he has this insurance and he wants to cover it so that the responsibility isn't put on the children but of course then we have the wife the ex-wife that is who divorced him and gave up the money after she divorced Probably didn't know that he had some sort of advanced payment when it came to insurance while he's having cancer. This story is horrible. And now she's trying to get a part of that money. This takes me back to that last video that was really popular that I did of the man who won the lottery. I mean, they're, they're, they're completely different situations. And I asked you guys, since in that situation, we had a husband who won the lottery five months after the divorce was finalized. She didn't even try to fight it. I was wondering, would she have tried to fight if she knew there was a chance? I thought she would. Because when you look at just how petty um, some women can get during a divorce who want to make sure that they drain you of every resource, if they can they will try to fight for that thing. What's also insane is that they are soulless people in the family court system who will sit there, not see this for what it looks like, and will actually reward this type of dark, evil behavior is what I call this. What do you guys think? Um, so, of course, a lot of people had a lot to say in the comment section here, but we're going to look at this first comment that actually came from a woman. This woman says, from the National Health Library of Medicine, the figure is 20.8% men versus 2.8% women. She's not wrong. So what is this chick talking about? Basically, there was a conversation that was had in the comment section down below um, where they started to talk about who's more likely to leave when their other partner is sick. And I've heard this before where a lot of women who claim this study that says that men are more likely to divorce women who are sick statistically when they need a partner the most. Here's what this guy had to say in response to that study. Let's check it out. Saying that women get left when they get sick more than men is really hard to believe. But to say that it's 28% to 2.9% is even harder to believe. Knowing that women divorce men at an 80% rate versus men divorcing women at a 20% rate, which is indisputable fact, like this doesn't make sense to me. Also, 20% is such a huge number. That's one in five, right? So if I knew five women that died of being sick, I would know one man that left her. And 
that just seems bonkers to me because I've probably known about 50 people in my life that have died from being sick and I don't know a single woman that got left by her husband. That would mean I knew 10. So lots going on with the music, his voice and the wind here. I know. Let's keep listening. I'll try to clean it up. I'll, maybe maybe I'll have it cleaned up by the time I've been talking about this and it won't matter. Let's keep listening. This made me want to go study it. I Googled it and all I found was a bunch of feminist woke articles about this. I didn't find anything that was objectively true and I couldn't even find the actual study. I had to go to DuffDuckGo where I found the study. And if I knew how to do the green screen thing, I'd have the screenshots in the background. You can trust me or not. What I found was really interesting. So... What it said was the divorce rate among people with cancer is pretty much the exact same as divorce rate as people without cancer. Like people just still get divorced when they're sick at the same rate as when they're not sick. But what the study found that was really interesting from what the articles say is they didn't say who was divorcing who. They just said it was similar among the population. It just was, it was interesting that when women got sick, they got sick or got divorced at 20% of the time. They didn't say the man was divorcing him or the man was leaving him. They just said that the divorce rate was higher when women got sick. They didn't give a reason and they didn't give a statement as to who. It's the feminism article saying it's men leaving sick women and men are terrible. And that's what you're reading. So we have to assume because it's the only information now this study was done like in 2007 it was a long time ago and articles have been being written off of this study ever since then like i saw an article in the new york times which is highly liberal like in 2018 but they have only done this one study back in like 07 right so we have to assume since women are the ones that leave 80 percent of the time that that stays true when they get sick so what's actually probably happening, which the study didn't say this and no news articles say this, and there's no data to back this up. What's actually probably happening is a woman gets cancer and she knows she's going to die and she wants to live her life the way she's always wanted to live it. So she him so that she can go be single, free and travel and do all the things without her husband. I would say that's more likely the case. And so to just spout this number as if it's fact, which I guess it is fact, but what the thing that's not fact is that it's the men leaving. The study specifically said that the divorce rates are similar to that of people that aren't sick. So what we know is women leave 80% of the time. And in when women get sick, they're probably still leaving 80% of the time. <sighs> This is what's dangerous about Googling stuff. Like I had to work my find this. I had to take a break from working on my triple turbo Cummins to find your lie. And you are lying. You might not know you're lying, but misleading people on purpose is just as bad as a straight up lie. So go back. If you don't believe me, go do your research. But when you told me that men are leaving their sick wives, it just didn't make sense because men stick through marriage. When they are absolutely completely miserable, they still stick through marriage. So the fact that their wife gets sick, like men operate as duty, right? Like we do things because it's our job. And if our woman is sick, it is our job to take care of her. I would. I'd say that probably just knowing men and knowing how I feel and how other men feel and how we operate and why we do the things we do. We don't crawl down into septic tanks and suck other people's shit and tampons out of septic tanks because we love it. We do it so we take care of our family. So knowing that about men and how strongly we feel about taking care of people that we've committed to, to say that men leave a woman 20% of the time, it just, it doesn't make sense. It's objectively not possible. And when I say objectively, I mean that word in the way it's defined in the English language. I'm not giving you, it's just impossible that that's true. And I'm sorry that you got led down this path of man hate and woke feminism and militant blah, blah, blah. But man, I can see how, I guess, if you're just reading the New York Times, but 
like I said, I had to work on that actual study. I couldn't even find it on Google. I had to go to DuckDuckGo, which isn't politically biased, right? So anyways, you might be the only person that watches this video. I don't care. That's the facts. Now you have it. So keep hating men for things that we do right and women do wrong. Take no accountability. That's, I think that's the entire issue with, between men and women is women refuse accountability. And while they're refusing accountability, they say, I'm taking accountability. It's the man who's not. Like, you're so anti-accountability that you're blaming men for you not taking accountability. <laughs> I don't know. I think women just started to have a little bit of gratitude for the sacrifices that the men in their life make. It would change everything. Your whole perspective about life would change. It just started to be great. Just a little bit. All right. So um, what do you guys think of that? To me, what he was saying there makes a lot of sense. If you really think about it, how many women right now are toughing their way through marriages that are difficult, just like they said they would when they made those vows, just like the man promised he would when they made those, those vows, and they're hoping things are going to change, that the man is somehow going to change who he is when he's always been who he is before she married him, right? They made all those commitments and vows to death do his part no matter what etc of course guys we're not talking about extreme abuse here let's not go crazy but how many women are toughing things out and let's say you get some scary diagnosis like cancer and you've been given a short time to live now you have no reason to hide the things that you've been truly thinking inside now you have no reason to pretend or hope that things will get better. Now you're just a woman. Because here's another study that we saw when it came to the whole lottery situation. It's funny, I keep going back to um, lottery winnings. But anyways, there's another study that says that women are more likely, two times more likely to divorce their husbands if they win the lottery. Whereas men, actually their chances of divorce go down lower. All right, guys, we're gonna check out some of the comments. And these are comments in response to the first video where the guy was telling the story about the guy and the insurance and the wife trying to get that 300k um a part of it that is first comment he says my ex somehow got my house into her name then borrowed ten thousand against it walked away and said good luck this coffee smells like shit of course he didn't like that coffee or somebody else who says my wife passed from cancer she was afraid that i would divorce her i told her over and over again i wasn't going to do that and somebody else here responded back and says i went through the same thing with my wife Thank God she's still here with me, with us. Uh, another comment here says, I'm in a good marriage, but I know when it comes to money, my angel will turn into a devil. Yo, it's all about them and what they can get. I mean, at the core of who men and women are, when it comes to resources, men create them and women gather. And there's a brutalness uh, to what extent some of these women are willing to go. Some of them, of course, to the extreme of just seeming like they don't have a heart, like this chick who's the main topic of discussion. There's another comment that says, my wife contracted an acute form of leukemia. I was her caregiver for 1.5 years and took care of our two kids. I stood by her side, never strayed. She divorced me 12 years later. Here's somebody else who says, my ex filed for divorce while I was on hospice care. She was very disappointed that I lived. <laughs> he wrote that in a funny way. Someone else responded back to that comment and says, God, I wish my dad would have survived. What a beautiful comeback that would have been. And he would have saw his ex for who she really was. Another person here says, sorry, he didn't make it. You sound strong and healthy. That's good. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. And to that first comment. Um, glad you made it. Here's another comment that says, there's no bar too low for women when it comes to money. Somebody else here added, mine left me because of an accident. Joke's on her. I'm walking again with my own business. Another comment here added, she's not selfish. She's just the average American woman. What do you guys think of the comments and responses from everybody? And while people may be quick to insert not all women, yes, we get it, right? I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to say, guys, not all women are like this, but when it's over half and the majority of women out here, life works in generalities. 
most women, unfortunately, most modern minded American women today are like this. It's, it's highly unfortunate. It's highly unfortunate. Now, when I say like this, I'm not talking about they will sit there and deplete your insurance as you're dying of cancer. Of course, that's a, a very extreme example. But when it comes to leaving marriages and breaking up families and leaving things in disarray, you can count on the modern woman to be successful. Guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of The Coffee Pot. Of course, I'm curious to know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Until next time, I'm out. Peace. 